What is up guys, Sultan here, welcome to another classic WoW gold farming video. I have already made one of these talking about my top 10 gold farms you can do while leveling, and all of which are also viable once you hit max level. You can expect to make anywhere from 20 gold to 80 gold per hour from these farms, maybe even more depending on RNG. This is basically part 2 to that video, so if you haven't watched that one already, I would suggest you give that one a watch. I will leave a pop up to that video in the top right corner right about now. In this video we are going to look at a couple more gold farms, some that might be more hit hidden or less popular. My goal is to provide you with a lot of different viable gold farms that you can do so in case one farming spot is taken you have several different spots you can go to. Of course some spots will have better rewards than others but ultimately it's better if you can be in a spot where you can keep killing enemies than being in an overpopulated spot where you have to compete for mobs. So without further ado let's get into the gold farms. Number 1 is the Satyr in Ashara and Felwood. Items you're looking for here is the Fel Cloth and Rune Cloth, plus they have a pretty good loot table in general, as these demons have increased the drops of armor and weapons of every quality, giving you more items to vendor and potentially more unique or rare items to auction. You have patterns like Wicked Leather Bracers and recipes like Elixir of the Mongoose, which can be worth selling to other players instead of vendoring. Like always, you just gotta check the prices of the auction house as it will be determined by supply and demand. You also have formula of Enchant Gloves Great Agility, which can also be worth selling on the auction house. Along with all this, they can also drop major healing potions, superior mana potions and demonic runes. One downside to farming these is that they can be a very popular go-to farm for most players, especially high level ones, because they are a very, very well known farm. On the other side you have uh, many items worth auctioning from this farm so if you feel like farming for some big ticket items to send to your auctioneer character this might be the farm for you, since so most of the other farms we'll cover in this video will be more about the raw vendor value instead of auction value. Number 2 is the Crystal Vein Mine in Stranglethorn Vale. Inside you will find a lot of basilisks that have great trash drops. You have drops like the Squishy Basilisk Eye which sells for 67 silver per stack of 10, Large Basilisk Tail which sells for 35 silver per stack of 5, and Prismatic Basilisk Scale which sells for 64 silver per stack of 5. Needless to say, these are beasts and having skinning will net you even more gold per hour. This will bring in roughly 15 to 25 gold per hour in raw gold value, and that's without counting any green, blue or purple world drops. Like any other mobs, you can occasionally get some uncommon items from these. Along with the uncommon items, you also have the chance of obtaining the rare item called Basilisk Hide Pants, leather pants with agility, spirit and stamina which required level 38 plus. Or you could even get very very lucky and get the epic item called Staff of Jordan, a staff with intellect and spirit and a plus 26 modifier to healing and damaging spells and effects, and it requires level 35 plus to use. This staff was very much wanted by healers and even some casters, seeing it was, it was pretty much best in a slot until level 60, and even a bit into level 60 in most cases. So with a steady 15 to 25 gold per hour in raw vendor value, even more with skinning and with the chance of getting uncommon, rare or even epic gear, I'd say this spot is pretty good. It can even be used for leveling and I would recommend level 40 plus at least. The third spot, or the, th the third farm, is Swamp Jaguars in Swamp of Sorrows. You can kill these pretty much anywhere in the Swamp of Sorrows, so try to find a spot with some decent mob density that is out of questing routes and away from the main road if you don't want to get attacked by enemy players. When you're killing these mobs, there are four items that will make up your consistent gold per hour. These are the two vendor items called the Long Soft Tail and Bristly Whisker. You also get two white items that are actually used in crafting, these are called Large Fang and Wicked Claw. These are used in both alchemy and blacksmithing to craft some pretty epic stuff, but depending on supply and demand it might actually be worth just to just vendor these. If anything, these might be worth something 3-4 to four months after release once most people hit max level and nobody kills the low level mobs that drop these since there are better gold farms out there, but in the beginning of classic I would say you can send a stack or two to your bank character then vendor the rest. As you want as much raw gold as possible for those mounts and that training. 
If you kill roughly 200 Jaguars per hour, one Jaguar roughly per 17 seconds I believe, you should be looking at roughly 20 gold per hour without skinning, and 25 to 30 gold with skinning depending on your market value. Keep in mind that these golds per hour are in pure vendor value, some items might be worth auctioning depending on supply and demand. You also have the chance of looting on common and rare items which will increase your gold per hour. Overall I would say this is a pretty good gold farm especially since it can be done while leveling and at max level it will be still be somewhat viable since you will kill jaguars much faster. And most of the gold per hour is in raw vendor value so there's not a lot of variables you need to factor in. Once you hit max level, it is also possible to pull them more aggressively and as a mage you can probably round up 20 mobs, ice block, frost nova, then aoe and kite, then loot and repeat. Which would mean you would kill a lot more mobs per hour which in return would give you a lot more gold per hour. This goes for pretty much every farm out there, out leveling a farm is usually always a good thing. If you are going to farm these jaguars, I would advise you to kill the crocolisks because there are so many of them, and they actually give decent vendor items as well, and they can be skinned too. If you're not a skinner, I would advise you to kill the spiders as well because of the vendor value items, plus more mobs on the farms help increase the mob density of the farm itself. More kill time and less downtime equals more gold per hour. Number 4 is the jaguars, mountain lions and coyotes in badlands. These are great to farm if many other big gold farms are taken because it's close to the level 40 range so you can effectively use it as a last rush to get that gold before your mount. So you can for example grind these mobs from level 38 to 40, which is what I usually do and it usually makes me roughly 60 gold in those two levels of grinding without counting skinning. These mobs are great to farm because of their vendor items, lots of the trash vendors for quite a lot, plus if you have skinning you can get a lot of heavy and thick leather from these. Another big bonus for these mobs is their mob density. Both in the middle of Badlands, west, east and south you will find a lot of coyotes and lions to kill, and you can effectively chain pull as long as you have the health and mana to do so. Number 5 is these spiders in western plaguelands. In general, spiders drop a lot of good vendor items plus spider silk which is used by tailors. It's also good because of the mob density allowing chain pulls as long as your health plus mana allows it. Because of mob density and chain pulls it also gives decent experience per hour as well if done while leveling. Spiders in general are also pretty easy to kill because of their health value, just beware of poisons and debuffs. I grinded these for about an hour at level 55 and managed to get 25 gold per hour, but I did get a couple of uncommon drops to help secure a couple of gold. Number 6 is the bears in western plaguelands. Bears are also great for gold farming for the same reasons as the spiders. They drop high value vendor items, great mob density, and decent experience per hour. An added benefit of killing bears is if you have skinning you can skin them. These bears in particular drop a lot of war bear leather, rugged leather, thick leather and rugged hide, all of which vendors for quite a bit and auctions for even more. As of right now, rugged leather sells for 4 gold per stack on my server and you easily get 2 or 3 stacks per hour from this farm. If you don't have skinning, I would advise you to kill the spiders mentioned earlier, but if you have skinning, killing bears yields more gold per hour in my opinion. As a side note, you can farm both bears and spiders in the same spot as shown in this video. Just west of Ruins of Underhall, there's both bears and spiders, while east of Ruins of Underhall, you'll find mostly spiders. Number 7 is the Elite Murlocs in Northwestern Stranglethorn Vales. Here we are taking advantage of a quest item that is tradable. People need 20 blue pearls that drop from these murlocs for a quest and some classes will find it difficult to solo them and might therefore buy the pearls instead. Classes like hunters and warlocks can easily solo these murloc, and because they are elite they also yield extra experience as well. Any high level player can kill these murlocs regardless of class, and anyone at level 35 plus with somewhat decent gear should be able to kill them as well. Another bonus of these uh, murlocs is that they have a somewhat high drop chance of uh, stranglethorn pages which is needed for quests, which you can either use yourself, vendor for a bit over 3 silver each, or sell to people questing through general chat or the auction house. 
The thing about a lot of these alternative gold farms is you're pretty much just grinding mobs, but you have to get into the mentality of checking which grey items actually render for the most gold. Generally, beasts are more worth farming than humanoids even if you don't have skinning just due to the price of their trash drops. You can always go out there and test out different grind spots by yourself, just remember you have to consider these factors. Gold per hour in vendor value, chance of uncommon, rare or epic drops, popularity of the farm, mob density and difficulty. So that's it for this video, I hope you found it useful and I hope it gave you a couple of alternative gold farms you can either do while leveling or when you hit max level. If you did enjoy the video please leave a like on it and if you want to see more make sure to subscribe. There are also links down below to my Twitch and my Twitter if you want to follow me there as well, along with a link to my Discord server. With that being said I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.